I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh... Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm an engineer with ADHD. Growing up, I had no idea that there was anything up with me. I had good grades at school, actually, but my teachers would always ask me, why haven't you done this piece of work? Why aren't you keeping up with the grades that we thought that you were going to get? Because I was doing pretty well. I'd be getting high grades, high scores, but when it came to GCSEs, A-levels, that kind of thing, when the time of your life where you actually have to start you know, studying, preparing for exams. I wasn't reaching my potential, and my teachers were telling me that, and it felt like a moral failing. I built up a lot of shame, and I think that's also what got me through my exams, just the fear of failure. I didn't get the grades I wanted and I didn't get and when I applied to university I didn't get my first choice um, so I, I had to opt for a foundation year and that's how I got into engineering. I thought I was doing quite well actually um, when I got to university because that was actually something that I wanted to do. Um, but even then, I was struggling. Um, I was pulling all-nighters all the time. I just couldn't get myself to study normally. Um, and I genuinely believed that I wasn't going to finish my degree. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Sorry, this is, I don't know why it's hard for me to talk about it. I genuinely didn't think I was going to finish my degree. Um, I mean, that was until I met my partner, because he didn't know he had ADHD at this time either. Um, but we studied together and egged each other on, and eventually we were able to uh, get through. When the pandemic hit, I had a big bout of depression, and I... This is the thing, ADHD doesn't only um, affect your professional or your edu your professional life or your education. It affects your personal life as well. So, emotional dysregulation was a big part of it, and um, I was already having a hard time taking care of myself. After that, um, I went on to do my placement year. I think it was fine at first because uh, people with ADHD tend to have a... We have an interest-based nervous system, so anything that interests us, anything that's novel, anything that's urgent, exciting, etc. We want to go and do it and we will probably put all of our effort into it. And that's what I did until I lost interest and that happens with a lot of my hobbies as well where I'm really interested for a little bit, I put all my time and effort into it and then gone. I don't care about it anymore. <laughs> that was really hard because I wanted to do well at my placement. Obviously I wanted to do good work, I wanted to contribute but my brain just wasn't having it and I thought to myself what is wrong with me? The biggest thing for me was fatigue. Um, just being able to, you know, take care of yourself and put in your energy, put energy into work, and then having time to work on your chores and everything is just a lot. Imagine you're just doing your work and you can't get yourself to do something, and then you keep telling yourself, "Why aren't you doing this?" You can just do it. It's so easy, etc. But that actually takes a lot of energy. 
and then that makes it a lot harder to actually get what you want done. I also had difficulty with concentration. Um, I couldn't focus on a task for long periods of time. Sometimes I just have days where I can't read. <laughs> well, I'll read a paragraph and I think to myself, I just did not take that in. And you have to just keep looking and keep reading over and over again. Text-to-speech actually helped a little bit with that. <laughs> Attention is a big issue as well. Um, being able to focus on the right thing. Um, so I'll be doing a piece of work and then the thing pops up into my head, a little thought, and I think to myself, okay, I'm just going to look this up because it will bother me for the rest of the day if I don't. So I go and look it up and I will do that, do everything around that thing that isn't my work for the rest of the day. <laughs> and it's just unhelpful. I was just looking through posts on the internet, as I usually do, and I found a post, I'm not sure where it was, but it was listing symptoms of ADHD. It was supposed to be some sort of comedy post, um, just talking about the struggles they've had and seeing if people related to it and just put some funny anecdotes, but then I thought to myself, that really sounds like me, forgetting things, being clumsy, uh, not being able to focus on anything. I kind of ignored that for a while and eventually I think when uh, some of the things around my home life got really difficult and I was struggling and more and more at work, my partner said, no, I think you really should explore this because it could help you. So then I went and looked around if there was anything I could do and for a while I didn't find anything until I remembered actually, I remembered seeing an email from the IET mentioning foothold and I think, I don't know how, my brain latched onto this piece of information that said they could help with diagnosis. So then. I just searched my inbox, typing, oh, foothold, diagnosis, and there was the email. So then I thought, okay, I'll see if I can get some help through foothold. After I got my diagnosis, I think I didn't really know how to feel. It was, I kind of knew the answer. But at the same time, it was a huge relief knowing that I wasn't just a bad person, I wasn't just lazy, um, that there was actually something different about me. It helped me a lot, I think, mentally, because I wasn't so hard on myself. Because of the diagnosis, I was also able to ask my university for help, especially with exams, because um, after my placement year, I was going to go on to my third year and finish my degree. And they were able to give me some uh, lenience around uh, assignment deadlines, um, they were going to help me get a disabled student's allowance, um, also some assistance around exams that I don't think I would have gotten the grade, I wouldn't have been as successful as I was if I didn't. Um, in my personal life, on top of just feeling a lot better about myself, I was able to look up some coping strategies and skills that I could work on to make life easier for me. Also, with my professional life, I was able to explain my issues to my employer, to my manager, and they're able to you know, understand the struggles that I'm going through and perhaps 
help me a little bit and you know give give me a little bit of grace i suppose when i'm not doing things quite right i mean i think the main thing is that i felt a lot better when i was whenever i made a mistake and i didn't feel like a bad person for making the mistake um, I was just a lot more patient with myself. So if I got something wrong, I'd think to myself, it's okay, uh, you could always try again, you'll do better next time. You don't have to be so hard on yourself. Because before, I'd just think, oh, you're so stupid. Why do you keep doing this, etc. But when, I, when you know what's going on, it's a lot easier to forgive yourself. It's because you understand yourself a lot better. There's an analogy someone made online where they described having ADHD and not knowing it as someone who needs glasses but doesn't know it. So imagine you keep stumbling into things. You don't know what's going on when you're in class, not even just in class, even at home and you get things wrong, you put things in the wrong place, well, and you don't know, you just need glasses. If you just knew, then you'd be able to, you know, do things for yourself, get glasses, and understand that you don't have to keep up with other people. You're not broken. You just need help.